This is Margaret. Margaret is in the genus Deinopis, in the spider family Deinopidae. In Greek, Deinopis roughly translates to fearful appearance, and therefore Margaret is often referred to as an ogre-faced spider. From Margaret's perspective, however, the creature that gave her that name is a friggin' terrifying giant with teeth the size of her face. She gave him the name Stick Bastard Quad. In any case, you've probably noticed Margaret's eyes, right above those two little cute nostrils. Oh crap, no. Those are also eyes. She has eight eyes in total, but the posterior median eyes are giant, the largest of any spider. In photographic terms, these two compound lenses have the equivalent of an F number of 0.58. If you don't speak nerd, that means dang they see good. Even more impressive, each evening they take up to two hours to build up a photosensitive membrane of rhodopsin-loaded microvilli inside their eyes. This allows them to gather 1,500 times more photons than our eyes. Their night vision is far better than cats or owls, and all of this is part of an unusual hunting strategy. Members of the family Deinopidae are net-casting spiders. First, Deinopis creates a scaffolding to hang from. Wait, Jerry, what's the spider doing? Do we have to blur that out? I understand, but I'm saying it looks dirty. Well, that's even worse. No, I'm saying it looks like it's relieving stress, like it was cramming for a math test and needed a break. No judgment. Deinopis is a cribbelid spider, meaning that it uses an ancient organ called a cribellum, which translates to field of dicks. Nope, that can't be true. Oh, sorry. Translates to little sieve, and up close, the cribellum looks just like a field of dicks. The cribellum is covered in almost 25,000 little spigots that produce incredibly thin fibers just nanometers across. These nanofibers are combined with a sort of silk anchor line from the posterior spinnerets, as well as silk from the median spinnerets. Basically, there's a lot going on down there. Lots of spigots. If you're a Dean Opus and you laugh so hard you squirt a little, it gets messy. That is why Dean Opus never laughs. But if it does, it's a small sound, like a one-cheek spread fart. Like a like that. On one of its legs, on a segment called the metatarsus, Dinopus has a specialized little comb called the calamistrum. This calamistrum weaves and combs the cribellate nanofibers into little puffs anchored onto two axial lines. Unlike its orb-weaving distant cousins, Deinopis does not create little drops of glue. Deinopis don't need no glue. It does it old school, like a grandpa that played marbles with cat turds. Just give me a bunch of cotton balls on a yo-yo string. <laughs> I'll get you a chicken. <laughs> Deinopis creates a net with this complex puffy silk, which it then detaches from the surrounding silk scaffolding. It grabs the edges in its little spider toes and tests to see if it's stretchy stretchy. Just right. It then does the next obvious thing. She turns around and takes a poop directly beneath her. Captured here in sex tape night vision green. <laughs> Some say this serves as a visual target, but it could also be a stinky lure in the gist of don't shit where you eat unless what you eat likes shit. She then hangs upside down and waits. When prey approaches, she strikes. It's a little anticlimactic, to be honest. <laughs> like, you know it's coming. Maybe let's look in slow motion. I don't know, it looks a little like what I would do if I had a net between my legs. What is amazing is that without glue, contact with even a single strand of the net can ensnare an insect. It turns out that these little puffs have a secret. In addition to creating tiny electrostatic attractive forces, the nanofibers change their structure when they come in contact with the waxy outer layer of the insect. The fibers seemingly fuse with the wax itself. It's like if the sweater that your grandma gave you fused into the packaging surrounding the Doritos. This bond is much stronger than glue and allows Deinopis to take its time, wrapping its prey up in silk while the insect thinks, Check me out, I'm a mummy. Oh, shit. I'm a mummy. It bites the insect and injects it with venom, with those little pores on its fangs. Maybe it bites it a bit more, just for fun, then liquefies it and slurps out the tasty parts. <laughs> 
She looks pissed. <laughs> it's like a lunch date after a bad argument. <laughs> Rage chewing. After dinner, it's mating time. A male approaches a female's web and taps gently to gauge interest. Prior to this, the male had deposited a small drop of sperm onto a sperm web. It then takes its palps, which look like little boxing glove hands, and it loads up a corkscrewy kind of thing in them, which is sort of like a penis, with sperm. I'll say it. I mean, don't shake hands with Spider-Man, because you don't know. If all goes well and the female is receptive, it's baby time. With one more specialized silk-weaving trick up her, well, butt, the female creates a remarkable egg sac. It may look like a wild bush testicle, but inside it's a roomy one-bedroom apartment shared by up to 200 little babies. And when it is time to emerge, they cut a tiny circle, and the circle of life continues. Is he going to come out? Is that David? I told you not to use him in this shot. He's an idiot. Well, I promise you, David's not getting out by himself. Is Vanessa out? Okay, we'll have her help. I don't know. What about that stick? Tell her to give him that stick. All right. Oh, God, he's trying to pull the stick into the hole now, isn't he? Yep, that's what he's doing. So tell Vanessa to tell David to use the stick to get out of the hole. Millennials. 